Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I'm going to talk about commodities today. We're having a commodity breakout. We've actually had uh, quite a bit of a, I'll, I'll show it when we take a look at the Bloomberg Commodity Index. We've had quite a bit of a pullback from a major run that uh, was had over the last couple of years. But now it looks like we're in breakout mode again. We'll see if it continues. We're going to start off with the Dow Industrials, then take a look at that Bloomberg Commodity Index. Take a look at USO, United States Oil, uh, XLE, which is the energy ETF. Take a look at the gold ETF, the silver ETF, and United States Copper. All right, let's start off here with the Dow Industrials versus the transports. Last week, the Dow dropped 903 points. Big move down, okay? Big wide range here. The entire range for the week was 1,255 points from high to low. And the transports were down three, 292 points. The big thing that jumps out at me is the divergence that's here. Okay, so the transports never got to the point where it took out this high. It looks like they're just out of sync in here. So it's going to be interesting to see how this resolves because when these two are out of sync, that's not a good thing for the market. All right, let's go back and take a look at the Dow Industrials. And I'm going to get rid of that line because I really don't need it there now. When you take a look at the daily chart, it was actually up on Friday, 307 points. So after that big move down on Thursday, a little snap back up. We closed below the 55-day moving average on Thursday. We haven't done that since. Let me go take a look. I think it was November. I mean, you got to, yeah, right here, November 9th. We haven't done that since November 9th. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to immediately break down. We need some follow through. We need to see this, you know, start to take out Thursday's lows and, uh, and continue to break down and start to roll over. But we've had pretty good thrust for a four day move down in here. Now, when I take a look at the LA Wave count that I've got, I am holding a count that says the March 28th high was the end of the C wave of the ABC move in here of the B wave of the of the primary wave B. OK, now don't focus on this in terms of this move. This is just a placeholder for now. We'll see if we continue to get the movement to the downside that I'm looking for. But right now, this is looking pretty interesting in terms of uh, what we're looking at. And if I drill in and take a look at that last intermediate wave C here, this is how I'm counting it. Yes, we had, we had a big wave one. And then we had a much smaller wave three. And then this fifth wave it was very choppy. And, you know, it, it's legit. It's shorter than wave three. So wave three is not the shortest wave in here. So watching this very closely to see, I mean, when you draw a trend line across these lows in here, we pretty much shattered that on Thursday. Let me uh, just do this right like that. Okay, so that's uh, kind of an interesting picture. And the other thing I wanted to point out is when we take a look at this weekly chart, let me, I don't need to see this on the weekly. So the other thing I wanted to show you is this zigzag pattern, intermediate waves. I'll adjust that in a minute. Got very, very close to the channel that you typically would carve out for a zigzag. And look how close we got to coming up and touching it in terms of the high in here. So again, we'll see if this holds. If the March 28th uh, high does not hold, then I think we're in for a much bigger move to the upside. But for now, I think uh, it looks to me like we've got a top end and we'll see if it gets confirmed. Okay. So that's the Dow Industrials. I'm not going to go into the other indices today. We're just going to take one index on the weekend and the other ones. But I'll tell you, 
I'm seeing the same kind of top uh, situation with the other indices. All right, so let's take a look at the um, Bloomberg Commodity Index. Let me pull that up. This is a weekly view of the Bloomberg Commodity Index. And I've got data going back to 2001. So here's that peak in mid-2008. Remember when oil was hitting like around $150 a barrel? And then it collapsed all in the same year. It went from like $150 a barrel to like $35 a barrel and less by the end of the year. And here's the big trend line that was shattered to the upside at the end of 2020. So we got a major breakout of this downward trend line. And then now, after having one heck of a run that peaked here in March of 2022, we've had basically a pullback and corrective move in here that there's a decent chance that this has ended. This sure looks like a breakout with this week. And again, these are this is weekly data right now. So it's been in this downward trending channel and it's held it pretty well. We had support that came in right in here. We got very close to hitting it and then we kind of bounced off of it, bounced out of the channel. The challenge, the short term challenge that's going to be coming up is getting through the resistance that's going to be in the middle of this triangle. I'm ballparking it around 105. Thinking if this index closes above 105, I think it could be off and running in terms of pushing. Now, what kind of retracement did we actually get with this? Let's take a look. And to make this a little more exact on the retracement, what I'd like to do is take it off of the um, semi log. And you could see we got well over 50%. And very close to so halfway between the 50 to 61.8 percent, which is a classic uh, deep retracement move in here. So, yeah, we've had a nice retracement. I think we're ready to rock and roll. OK, so that's the view coming out of the Bloomberg Commodity Index. So why would all these commodities and why are, why are things starting to push high? Well, here's one interesting perspective. Larry McDonald uh, put this out. He said, tectonic plates are shifting underneath the surface. We had this big jobs number on Friday. Remember, it was like over 300,000. And it was almost a little over twice, I think. Well, the first expectation I saw was 150,000. But then there, I think it was like 214 or something like that. But no matter, <laughs> we, we exceeded it significantly. And what he's saying is normally that would have taken 20 to $30 off of gold any month over the last year, but it didn't, you know, and gold was up $10 on Friday with five year inflation expectations at fresh 14 month high. So that's what he's talking about here, inflation expectations. So kind of interesting things that are built, getting built in underneath the surface. Let's take a look at uh, United States oil. Let me go back to the moving average view. We go to United States oil and I'll tell you what, let me just take it out to the weekly view. This is USO. So on this longer term weekly view, you can see we've broken a downward trending gen, uh, trend line to the upside with the price action that happened this week, up $3.67 on USO. So this is getting pretty interesting also. Now, I am holding, that is not the right one. This is the right count. I, for, for the longest time, we really thought that we had a much more significant bearish view going on, bearish trend going on coming off this peak uh, on oil, but it just hasn't played out. And given the fact that we've pushed above this high right here and breaking this trend line and, and you know, what I just showed you, I just think that we are going to continue to push to the upside, and that's what I'm looking for. So we kind of map it out and watch for the wave structure to confirm it. So that's what we're looking at right now with oil. Let's take a look at XLE, which is the energy ETF. Okay, so here's the big picture I've got on XLE coming off the March 2020 lows. OK, 
Okay. Now, you know that a lot of these oil companies have had, and they're, you know, just broad based energy companies have had some pretty significant moves up here into 2022. Huge moves on a lot of these stocks. But now uh, many of them have gone sideways. Some have continued to surge, no doubt. But it looks to me like we're getting a breakout out of this very much sideways XLE trading since November of 22. And now we're kind of breaking out of this Okay, the last couple of weeks, actually. So I'm looking for this to continue. And when I look at this, um, oh, I know what I forgot to No, OK, <laughs> I did show you, but I want to show you another view here. I want to show you this this channel and what this could project for with XLE. OK, and so what we would do is project from the top of wave three. And so this would be the top of a channel. Now, how fast it gets there and does it in truly get all the way to the top of channel? We'll see. No one knows. I mean, we're already getting a little bit overbought. But the nice thing about getting overbought like that many times you get overbought, you stay overbought as it trends. So we'll see what happens here in this picture uh, with this wave count. This has been a big, strong wave three. Uh, we'll see what kind of wave five we get in here. Uh, I tell you, we could let me let me do something. I need to adjust something. OK, here's what I was trying to do is pull this wave five in here and get this within the uh, visual so we can see it. And now what I'm looking for is five versus one. And lo and behold, that if wave five equals wave one, which many times it's one of the first targets. It's right here at the top of the channel at 161.83. So let's say 162. And where did we close? $98 on, uh, on Friday. So it's going to be interesting to see what kind of move we get out of XLE over the uh, next year or two. OK, so that is the picture we got there. Now let's take a look at gold. Gold is just going right through the roof. And GLD was up $9.42 this last week. Big, big thrust. It's been going straight up ever since it closed above this major resistance level that I had identified. Now it's showing as a shaded area between the highs that occurred in 22, the high that occurred in 20. OK, so the other interesting thing is, yeah, we are not only above those highs, we're above the 2011 peak that happened. You know, you can just see here's the long term perspective. We are well above that. So uh, I think I show, well, I did show my members once. I said, OK, let me just take a look at the monthly view here. And it does look kind of like a big cup and handle kind of thing. Now, if you can really call, you know, this kind of long term move a cup and handle. It is an interesting picture. I'll show you another one in a minute. OK, so that is that is gold. Let's take a look at uh, silver. Here's a weekly view of SLV. OK, it was up two dollars and twenty eight cents this last week. Ten percent move on SLV. And what I'm showing you is a weekly view. So this range is the range between high and low in 23, the high and low in 22, the high and low in 21. And you can see we've closed above the high of uh, 22. OK, so pretty interesting move that we've got going on in here. Um, let me take a look at the LA Wave picture. This is what we've got. OK, and again, we may be getting close to the first minor wave being finished. We'll see uh, how much more that we've got in here. This is a big, big move. And sometimes, you know, again, if we if we're counting five waves in here like this, one, two, three, four and five, you know, many times with commodities, the fifth wave has a tendency to really push and really extend. So this this could get real interesting. So the other thing I wanted to show you is so let me go back to gold and show you a perspective here. 
This is something I had overlaid and showed my members uh, a week or two ago. I think it was a couple weeks ago, actually. So what we've got is, is SLV overlaid on GLD. So GLD is on the right axis, SLV is on the left. And you can see back in 2011 where, you know, SLV peaked at around $48 or so, you know, so the price of silver must have been right around $45, $46, $48 an ounce. Very interesting, very close to what it got to in 1980. It was around $45 an ounce. But look how this has lagged what was going on. But the but silver, SLV, can really put on the afterburners. Look at this move right here, just like straight up. And this move right here in 2020, just straight up. We get another move like that, and yeah, we'll get pulled, we'll get caught up and be in sync very quickly. So this could get really, really interesting with silver. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to show you is this cup and handle picture. Now, Jesse uh, tweeted this out, and this actually came from Kimmel Charting Solutions. I saw somebody else do a similar type thing with this. But this is a massive cup and handle that they're saying all the way back to that $45 an ounce in 1980. And he's showing data from 1976 to present. And you can see how it just went straight up. Well, here we are. And, you know, we got this handle. And he's saying 11 years to form the handle. And he's just, you know, question mark, are we getting a breakout? Well, it's a, it's a pretty interesting picture. And it sure looks like it's trying to break out to the upside. Okay, so that is um, silver. And for grins, let's. I took. To, I looked at the gold and silver. Um, let's take a look at copper. Don't want to leave that out, since it wants to join the party too. So let's take a look at United States copper. So here's what's going on with it. It had a big move up over 5% this last week, $1.42, closing at $26.54. So yeah, I think this is in bull mode also. You know, and uh, I'm watching for this to continue pushing up here in this kind of manner would be not surprised at all to see it take out these multi-year highs back over here the way this is acting. Okay, so we're going to be keeping an eye on that. Now this ETF is not super heavily traded. I mean, when you look at the volume on this, it's 509000 for the week. So it's not a, but it, it tracks the price of copper very nicely. So that's the picture that we've got. Okay, that's it for this weekend. If you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this information, on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website, check out the membership. Everyone have a great week. We'll talk to you on the next video.